My name is Bruce, also known as the Crazy Inventor, and this is my latest idea, my latest business venture, last dance, funeral preparations, funeral planning. And one of the things I'm going to offer is the Buzz Bomb crematory ash spreader device. Uh, now, let me say this, in our jurisdiction, and maybe yours as well, the government has all kinds of things to say about disposal of human remains, and they want to regulate that, and they tell you you can't do this and you can't do that, so I don't want to tell you to do something that's illegal in your jurisdiction. Uh, so we're not going to put human remains in this rocket. This is the prototype. We're going to test this and if it works I'll know what to do for the next one. You can uh, obviously embellish it with all kinds of mushy remarks, farewell notes. This rocket uses an Estes E-series engine. This engine puts out nine newtons of thrust for almost three seconds. If this rocket, and, and, and this engine is rated at a maximum of a 15 ounce rocket, this rocket weighs 10.7 ounces. I weighed it at the local post office electronic scale. This weighs 10.7 ounces and I have about 3 ounces of ashes that we're going to put in it. And we just put them in to the nose cone area. I have a little cup to keep the ashes towards the top of the rocket. This is rocket science and what's interesting Originally, I was just going to dump the ashes down at the bottom, thinking that gravity would keep the rocket going straight up if most of the weight's in the bottom, and that is not true. The center of gravity has to be above, towards the top, above the resistance of air. So these fins make a big, broad resistance to air, and the center of gravity has to be higher than that. So you want to put your payload up towards the top. I know it doesn't sound right, but that's the way it works. If the wind is blowing, the wind's going to catch these fins and point the rocket in that direction. So you want to, you want the center of gravity higher than that. This thing, hopefully, will work like a charm. If it turns into a catastrophic failure, it'll probably get a million hits on YouTube. The engines are supposed to be ignited with an electronic match, an electric match, and that takes a launch system, it takes batteries and electric wires, and the batteries might be dead, and I wanted to make this as foolproof and easy as possible for my for my uh, offspring, <laughs> whoever's going to do the favor, do me the favor of sending my ashes into orbit. At least I'll have fulfilled one of my wishes, and that is to have a rocket ride. I made this prototype with the same E9 series engine. Turned made a bottle rocket. This is a little lighter than. Than the uh, prototype buzz bomb, but I want to test the ignition system. If this fuse does not light the bottle rocket, then we're just going to start over. This fuse was purchased at a fireworks shop, and it's called waterproof fuse. I found out, however, that it's not waterproof. So if you lay this in the wet grass, it's not going to work. So I spray painted a coat of clear lacquer on the fuse to keep it from getting wet. Uh, doggone it, that really, it's, it looks like waterproof fuse, it's green, 
like waterproof fuse, but it doesn't have a waterproof coating on the, on the outside. So we're going to test this out first, and when this thing goes off, we'll be able to see how high it went. This rocket won't go that high, but it should have a uh, spectacular finish. It should disperse these ashes out nicely, and if it doesn't, then I'll have to redo the contraption up here that holds the ashes. I'll have to rethink that. You'll want a launch rod for your rocket. You can buy this 3 16 steel dowel, four feet long, at your local hardware store. And you'll want to sand it smooth, because it'll have teeth marks in it and stuff, and maybe a little rust. You want to sand it smooth with sandpaper. And then you'll also want to file the boogers on the ends so that there's no burr to catch the rocket on the way up. You want that to have as little resistance as possible for the initial thrust. And then I took an old candle and I rubbed it on there and wiped off the excess wax to make it as slippery as possible. So we'll just shove that in the ground about a foot. We need uh, two feet or so to get the rocket started in the right direction. If there's any wind, you'll want to tip this into the wind a little bit. And the stiffer the wind, the further you'll want to angle it so that the wind will take the rocket overhead. You do not want to launch the rocket. Let's talk about safety rocket rules. In fact, your rocket will come with the uh, Ten Commandments of Rocketeer Safety, Rocketeer Safety. And one of those is you never use metal parts in your rocket. This is all cardboard and wood or, uh, and some plastic, but no metal, because this thing could turn into a uh, hand grenade. You don't want to launch it in the trees, obviously. It'll hit a branch, and you won't have, you won't have a good view of it anyway. So we're going to take it out to an open pasture. Uh, most cemeteries are, have an open area if you wanted to launch it at a cemetery. And that's what we were going to do, but that's just too, too far of a drive. After I shove that metal launch rod into the ground, I'm going to drop this blast plate over that. And that'll keep the flame coming out. Of, there's a big flame coming out of the bottom of this rocket. So we don't want to start a grass fire or anything like that. So we're also going to take along a gallon of water just in case there's a grass fire. This waterproof, supposedly waterproof fuse, burns at a rate of about 20 seconds per foot. So a three-foot piece would burn for a minute. A six-foot piece will burn for two minutes. And we, I want to make sure with this prototype that we are at a safe distance away. So we'll probably have a, put a two-minute fuse on it, six feet long. And uh, with that, what else can I think of? Life is like a bottle rocket, Psst, and it's gone. Six.